Okay, let's solve 2y dy equals sine of x and y of 0 equals positive 1. So we're going to do this by using definite integrals. So separate the variables first. So 2y dy is equal to sine x. If you're interested in understanding why this is allowed, some of the technical details behind this. There's a good uh, book. The author is Howell. You can buy it with the description if you like. This is one of the better books on differential equations. It's got only a few reviews, but they're all very good. Primarily because he doesn't skip details. And he doesn't gloss over things, and he goes through them in great detail. So if you really want to understand why things work as they do, in a somewhat understandable fashion. Okay, how will differential equations? So now what we can do is we can anti-differentiate or integrate if you like definite integral. Now on the bottom I'm going to put 1. Why? Because you see it says y of 0 is equal to 1 and the 1 is a value of y. To get a function or to get an object of the form y of x equals stuff with x. We're looking for that after all as the solution. Up here you have to have y of x. Again, I'm glossing over some of the technical details here. So I'm going to integrate from 1 to y of x, and then it's going to be 2y dy. On the right side, I'm going to do a definite integral that goes from 0. And up here, it's going to go up 2x as the upper limit, because we're looking for an expression that contains x as a variable, so you can't have a constant up there for that reason. And then here, it's going to be sine s ds. Notice I'm using a dummy variable. The dummy variable is not strictly necessary, but we just have it there because supposedly it helps people not to get confused with the upper limit of integration. Now look, look what happens on the left side. You're going to have y squared integrated between y of x and then 1. And on the right side you're going to have negative, well you're going to have negative cosine s integrated between x and 0. Look what happens on the left side. Now you're going to plug in y of x and look what you're going to get. You're going to get y of x squared, which is what we are looking for. We are looking for y of x equals something with x, right? Minus and then 1 squared is equal to negative cosine x. Now be careful, the next stage is going to be minus a negative cosine of 0. So look very carefully. In the middle I have two negatives. One from negative cosine and also one from the formula. So now you're going to have y of x quantity squared minus 1 is equal here to negative cosine x plus 1, because the two negatives give a positive and cosine of 0 is 1. And now you take the negative 1, you move it to the right side, so you're going to have y of x squared is equal to negative cosine x plus 2. Let's finish this up here. Now you have to take square roots, and you have to remember that this condition states that when x is 0, y is positive 1. So that's relevant because that tells you that you've got to take the positive square root. You're going to have y of x here, let me not skip this step, right? You, you would be doing something like this, essentially. Let me write it down this way. So square root of y of x squared, you see, is equal to, and then you really at first would have a plus or minus square root of, now you have negative cosine x plus 2, you can write it as 2 minus cosine x, not important, either way is fine. On the left side, they will cancel, so you have y of x, and again, you got to take the positive because y of 0 is equal to positive 1, not negative 1. So you're going to have a positive root of 2 minus cosine x. And then this is the solution. Again, of all the differential equations books I've looked at over the last several months, the Howell book seems to be the best in terms of being student-friendly because details are not glossed over and a lot of stuff is explicitly very slowly developed. So I really like this book. There's another good book that I like. It's this one right here. It's an older book, Differential Equations by... Red Heifer, Introduction to Differential Equations. This one is perhaps a bit more abstract, but it also has some beautiful insights, and the way the exercises are developed in this particular book is also somewhat student-friendly. Instead of just telling you do this, that, the exercises are kind of uh, designed to walk you through improving your understanding in small steps. Okay, I'll leave it at that, so you can find links to the books down below. Leave a like if it's helpful.